Hey everybody. So you want a small crossover and you want to go off-roading. Well, there really isn't a better choice than the Jeep Cherokee. But no, I'm not talking about this Jeep Cherokee. Right here beside me is the 2020 Cherokee High Altitude Special Edition. This model is for the buyer who wants unique styling, some luxury features, but also an above average 4x4 system. Well, at least that's what Jeep claims and that's exactly what I want to put to the test. So in this video, we're going to run around on my snowy roads here and see exactly how this 4x4 system works and if it's any good. Then of course we'll discuss the luxury features and then I took this Cherokee on a road trip down to Detroit over 500 miles so I'm going to find out exactly how the fuel economy is in this model and I might have some secrets to share from Jeep by the end of this video because I learned a couple things on my trip. So don't go anywhere and let's get started right now. One of the reasons you'd go for this high altitude package is the way that this Jeep looks. Now, you probably already noticed this, but really what this package does is it makes the Cherokee monochromatic. It comes with all kinds of body color accents, body color front bumper, body color mirror caps, and then it accents it with a whole bunch of black badging, although Jeep specifically calls it granite crystal. So you get a granite crystal grill, you get that granite crystal Jeep badge, a granite crystal rear fascia. Um, yeah, so you get that really dark color to sort of accent accent the monochromatic theme and if you want to know about this right here this paint job is called velvet red pearl it's a nice deep red and uh, I got to tell you guys I really do like the way this Cherokee looks and maybe more important than the high altitude package actually was the facelift that arrived for the Cherokee in 2019 they really did a nice job at making it a little less uh, aggressive looking and actually just a little more grown up looking a little less juvenile so I think that facelift facelift made a big difference. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Is this Jeep handsome or not? Now let's see what's under the hood of this Cherokee. This is the turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine that was introduced into the Cherokee back in 2019. Now here's what's interesting. This is actually the most powerful engine you can get in the Cherokee, but it's also the most efficient. It makes 270 horsepower, Technically, that's down one horsepower from the V6. The V6 makes 271, but this turbo engine makes 295 pound-feet of torque. That's over 50 pound-feet more than the V6. So we're calling this the most powerful engine in the Cherokee and the most fuel efficient. Time to go over the build sheet and the price, everybody. So you can see it's a 2020 Cherokee high altitude. Now it starts life as a Cherokee Limited, and the price on that base price is 40995 Now you can see there, there's the engine, 9-speed auto. Now this is all the stuff that comes standard. You can see the very first one, Jeep Active Drive 1. So Active Drive 1 and that select terrain management that comes standard on every single one of these things. So you don't have to pay any extra for that stuff. Now we get down here. So you can see there that customer preferred package, 2195 that is the high altitude package. There's all the styling stuff, the infotainment system, the wheels, all that stuff that comes with the package. Then of course you have a couple options added, safety, technology, luxury group, trailer, and then that engine. Two liter turbo, only a thousand bucks. I like that. Finally, we get to the price of 51,260. First things first, you have to understand the different levels of Jeep four-wheel drive systems here in the Cherokee. So there's Active Drive 1, Active Drive 2, and then Active Drive Lock. So Active Drive 1, that's what we have here in our Cherokee. It only allows you to choose four different select terrain settings. That's the only manipulation I have over the four-wheel drive system. 
Now, bump up to Active Drive 2, and you're going to get a transfer case. You're gonna get a real T case, and that means you're also gonna get neutral, so you can flat tow this Cherokee, and of course, you're then gonna get a low range mode, which is selectable by the driver. Finally, get up to that full Active Drive lock system. Uh, that is what is available in the Jeep Tra Cherokee Trailhawk. That's the most off-road ready version of this vehicle, and Active Drive lock, like the name suggests, you're gonna get a locker in the rear end, a real mechanical locker. And once you bump up to Active Drive 2, you actually also get a one inch lift in suspension to accommodate that transfer case and all the extra components it needs. So that's sort of how Jeep sets this thing up. And actually what's interesting about Active Drive here in the Cherokee is that when you're in drive and high, if you wanna put it that way, uh, just cruising down the road, the 4x4 system works entirely in the back background. There is another interesting enhancement which arrived for the Active Drive 1 system here in the Cherokee in 2019 as well, and that is a fully disconnecting rear drive shaft. So when you're just driving on dry roads like I am now, you're not powering those rear wheels at all. This thing is just front wheel drive, and that means you're gonna get the best fuel economy possible. Now, how about right here, we cut to my Detroit road trip, and I'll tell you all about the MPGs possible in this Cherokee. All right, time for the first fill up. Let me tell you about all the factors in this fuel economy test. So first of all, I've had my cruise control set at 120 kilometers an hour or 75 miles per hour. So that's been the speed I've been consistently aiming for. And then of course, it's cold outside. Now it's not a particularly cold day. It was about minus six degrees Celsius when I took off this morning. It's about minus three now. It's supposed to get up to around zero today. Of course, zero is 32 Fahrenheit for all you that don't know. Um, so it's not extremely cold, but definitely a chilly day. So that's everything that's going into this fuel economy test. As for the four wheel drive system here in the Cherokee, I've got it set to auto. I'm almost a Chrysler. I will let you know if I can, what I learn at FCA. Okay folks, just pulling into park here at FCA HQ. Of course, I'm surrounded by Jeep Wranglers. And now let's go ahead and take a look at what our fuel economy was on this leg of the trip. So, let's go ahead and go down. Vehicle info, driver assist, here we go. Ooh, not bad. So our average thus far, 9.8 liters per 100. And let's see what the trip average says. Yeah, same, 9.8 liters per 100 and we've done 432 kilometers. Okay, now we're over to US. So we scroll down from vehicle info. There it is, 23.8 miles per gallon, and we've done a total of 268.8 miles. Now it's been a beautiful day for a drive, so no complaints about the weather. Now I'm going to go inside FCA, learn some information that I may or may not be able to share with you. Make sure you stay to the end of this video to learn what that secret info might be or might not be. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then we'll hit the road and we'll do another 268.8 miles and I'll let you know what the fuel economy is once we get back home. Okay folks, we're back on the road and we are Canada bound. So I just left FCA's headquarters here in Auburn Hills and I did learn some pretty interesting stuff. Sadly, it's stuff that I can't share with you though. There's a couple little things I can tell you. Here's what I'm gonna let slip. First of all, the Chicago Auto Show is coming up. Um, February the 6th is gonna be the big reveal day for media anyways. So that's only about three weeks away. Uh, make sure you stay tuned because there is some big news coming at the Chicago Auto Show. And specifically, one of the things I'll let slip, it's a Jeep. Sure.
and it's a new model, but that's all I can say. So make sure you come back to TFL Truck and or TFL Now, our breaking news channel, where we're gonna cover everything from the Chicago Auto Show. So they just showed it to me. I'm under embargo though, so if I tell you all about it, well, some Jeep PR person's gonna show up and break my knees, and I don't want that. So uh, yeah, event's over. I'm back in my Cherokee now. I'm headed back for home. And of course, we're gonna put on the other 250 miles on this road trip right now. So uh, stay tuned and I'll tell you how the MPG does. All right, everybody, it's nighttime now. We made it, full day worth of driving. And here's the totals. Let's take a look. 915 kilometers and 9.6 liters per 100 kilometers not bad at all now i'll switch those over to us units that's 24.4 mpg and just so you guys know the combined rating for this cherokee with this two liter turbo is 24 miles per gallon so it is dead on its combined rating it's not too close to its 29 mile per gallon highway rating but again when you consider the cold 24.4 is not half bad, but hey, now we're gonna go fill up and then we'll do the math ourselves. Okay, everybody, let's do the math ourselves. And this one's first gonna take some converting because we filled up in the States and Canada. So we use 13.783 gallons. Now that converts to 52.174 liters. And then over here on the second receipt, you can see we used 43 point one 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 liters and if you add those together using the calculator here on the phone you'll see that's a total of ninety five point two eight five liters of fuel used and it was used over nine hundred and fifteen point one kilometers so we take this number and we divide it by 915.1 and then go ahead and multiply by 100 to move the decimal and we come up with 10.4 liters per hundred kilometers when we're doing the math ourselves and for my u.s folks that comes out to 22.617 mpg so that's actually considerably worse than what the computer told us we were getting and i'm a little bit surprised by that how big the discrepancy is and i'm not sure who to believe here uh, 24 mpg i felt good about because it's the combined rating for this thing but 22 mpg i certainly don't feel great about in this crossover it's too bad all right folks first test of the jeep active drive one system is coming up so i'm in this small little parking lot right here totally snow covered and it's actually kind of icy underneath so braking traction here is not hard at all and what i want to show you is the difference between auto mode and snow mode so in auto this thing is front wheel drive and it's waiting to detect slip and now once the slip is detected it will send power to the rear wheels and that actually has a funny sort of consequence so watch this i'm in auto the wheel is turned at full lock I'm not gonna gas her too hard but a little bit of gas right here and there it is so <laughs> literally the front end starts to pull you around the corner but then as the Jeep says oh wow I'm, I'm losing grip here I don't have traction send power the power hits the rear axle and when the power hits the rear end steps out on you like a rear wheel drive vehicle now the traction control quickly reins you back in but it's very interesting that you know when you have that axle going from off to being driven you actually do feel a dynamic difference in the way this thing drives but now Here's the next setting. So now we're gonna put it over into snow mode. And now in snow mode, essentially you're telling Active Drive, hey, we're driving in snow. I want you to stay locked up. I don't want you to be reacting. I want you to be ready. So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna do the same test and we're gonna feel it. So I'm fully locked, bit of gas. And yes, it just turns. It just absolutely turns. And you can feel the front wheels pulling you through the corner, you can feel the rears pushing you through the corner, and it doesn't have that either that moment, that event, which suddenly says, oh, here's the power, and the rear end steps out on you. So the active drive and the select train knob, once you understand what all these modes do, you can really use it to your advantage. 
What is it like to just drive this Cherokee? Well, actually all the luxury features really come together to make this a nice, quiet, comfortable cruising crossover. Uh, these seats really do a nice job at supporting you, hugging you, and being soft and comfortable. I did 500 miles in this thing in one day, and it was no issue at all. I fit in here quite good, and the seat has quite a bit of adjustability. It really does go low down in the vehicle, and I personally, as a tall guy standing at 6'2", I appreciate that. Now, another thing which I really do like is this powertrain. So this is the two liter turbo hooked up to the nine speed automatic and it has a ton of power and plenty of torque, 295 pound feet. If I floor it, there's the power. So like a normal turbo, the revs shoot up, you feel the power hit when the gear change happens, but then about two seconds later, you feel that turbo power just start coming on strong and it just pulls this Jeep up into speed. I think putting this engine in this Cherokee was an excellent idea. Now, going for the 3.6 V6, you're gonna get more of that linear power. It's gonna feel a little more natural maybe, but um, if you just want the powerhouse of the bunch, you have to get this two liter. Okay, everybody, that's it for this one. I think with the introduction of this two liter turbo engine, Jeep's really hitting a sweet spot in the Cherokee, offering tons of power, good fuel economy, and above average four x four capability. Now, like I already mentioned, make sure you guys come back to the TFL network for the Chicago Auto Show because there's some exciting stuff coming from Jeep. That's all I'll say for now. And of course, make sure you go below this video, leave a comment, hit like, hit subscribe, and then come straight back here to the channel for the latest news views and real world reviews. See ya.